Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. The shiniest new 5 star DPS character, Jing Liu, has finally arrived in Honkai Star Rail. In this video, I'll be going through everything you need to know to master the way of the sword. Having lost her sanity to Mara, and thus literally being insane, Jing Liu is here to bring some insanity to our gameplay. Jing Liu is an ice type character that walks the path of destruction, and dare I say she is quite the formidable DPS character. In today's video, we'll go over everything you need to know about her, including her entire kit, relics and stat priorities, light cones, teammates, eidolons, and of course my opinions on her and a quick showcase at the end of the video. Jing Liu's kit revolves around simply taking off her blindfold, which somehow catapults her damage output. She's an excellent blast damage type character, and she also saps HP from her teammates to increase her own damage. And of course, she has a basic attack, Lucent Moon Glow. This is a completely unremarkable basic attack, and you should actively avoid using it. Only use it if you have no other option, for example if you need skill points. After that, we have a much more important part of her kit, her skill, Transcendent Flash. Her skill costs one skill point and deals an instance of 200% ice damage to a single target. More importantly, it provides Jing Liu with one stack of Syzygy energy. But we'll have to talk about her talent next before we continue on with part two of her skill. Her talent, Crescent Transmigration, allows her to take off her blindfold when she has two stacks of Syzygy. Now that she can see, she has entered her Spectral Transmigration state. Entering Spectral Transmigration state, action advances her forward by 100% so she can immediately move again. While in Spectral State, her skill changes from the fairly unremarkable Transcendent Flash which we saw earlier, to the very remarkable Moon on Glacial River, which I'll just be calling her Moon Slash Moving Forward. Moon Slash doesn't cost any skill points, but it does drain one stack of Syzygy, and it is a much stronger blast attack than her unenhanced skill. Moon Slash is also considered skill damage and deals half the damage to adjacent targets compared to the primary target. So why is her Moon Slash hitting so darn hard? Well, while in this spectral state, she gains a whopping 50% crit rate at talent level 10. Also, during this spectral state, whenever she attacks, she will drain 4% of the respective max HP from her allies. And however much health she drained, she'll gain 540% of the amount of health drained as attack, capped at 180% of her base attack. In this example, my Jing Liu is gaining a massive 2270 attack on her Moon Slash. It's worth mentioning here as well that her teammates need to have a total of 10,508 max HP for Jing Liu to gain the maximum attack buff at talent level 10 with her signature Light Cone. The Light Cone chart later in this video will have how much HP is needed for each Light Cone for her team in order for Jing Liu to gain the maximum attack buff. She can also have up to 3 stacks of Syzygy energy. And when her Syzygy stacks hit zero, she decides it's time to put her blindfold back on and her spectral state ends. Anyway, to put it in razor speak, take blindfold off, allies look yummy, eat bit of allies, much bigger ouchies. Up next we have her ultimate, Florifemoral Dream Flux. If used while she's not in spectral state, the damage is a bit lacking to say the least. However, if used during her spectral state, Jing Liu will gain the massive crit rate and attack buff, thus dealing way more damage. And just for good measure, it also generates a stack of Syzygy. 
And last but not the least, we have her technique, Shine of Truth. Her overworld technique, Shine of Truth, is a dimension-based technique, and it freezes the enemies inside of its radius and provides her a stack of Syzygy when entering battle. This extra stack allows her to very quickly enter Spectral State with just one use of her skill. Speaking of rotations, for important battles, you generally want to use her technique prior to the fight and just always use her skill whenever possible. Whether it's in its unenhanced state for Syzygy stacks to enter her Spectral State, or it's the enhanced Moon version, you'll still be using her skill then just use her ultimate during her spectral state, so that way her ultimate gains the massive crit and attack boosts from her spectral state. There are some fringe cases where you can use her ultimate outside of spectral state to gain a Syzygy stack in order to enter spectral state and thus gain 100% advance forward to perhaps finish off a wave one turn sooner. But for most situations, you'll want the attack and crit buffs on her ultimate from her spectral state. Another quick trick is that if your Moon Slash is about to use your last stack of Syzygy, but you know that she'll still get her ultimate from using it, you can immediately use her ultimate right after the Moon Slash to stay in Spectral State for one turn longer, since you'll gain the Syzygy stack from her ultimate. Now as for her breaking prowess and energy regeneration, most of it is quite standard, with one outlier being that her unenhanced skill generates 20 energy and her enhanced moon slash skill generates 30 energy. For talent priority, you'll want to level up her skill, followed by her talent and her ultimate. Lastly, you can level up her basic attack for completion sake. In the next section are her relics and stats. Overall, the main build I recommend is the usual crit body, generally crit damage, speed boots, ice sphere, and attack percent link rope. But let's go through a few options to illustrate why I suggest this build. Replacing her speed boots with an attack percent boots leads to a rather modest 11% increase in damage to her moon slash. This gain is quite small due to her talent providing a ton of attack for her. Another option is to replace her link rope with energy recharge. There are certain times where this allows her ultimate to come out one turn sooner. However, even without an energy recharge rope, Jing Liu can basically ultimate once every time she goes into spectral state. State, as long as she gets hit literally once or kills an enemy during those five turns. And finally, let's say we replace her crit body or ice sphere with an attack percent piece, well we can see a 10 to 11% drop in her damage output, and unlike the energy recharge rope, these provide literally no additional utility. So my personal recommendation again is to stick with the build at the top, which is the usual crit body, speed boots, ice sphere, and attack percent link rope. Another important thing to remember while building your Jing Liu is to avoid over critting. Jing Liu's talent provides 50% crit rate at talent level 10. This means that you'll want to avoid having over 50% crit rate since anything over 100% crit rate is completely wasted. And also don't forget things like Fu Xuan's skill, which provides up to 12% crit rate should you run Jing Liu with Fu Xuan. As for substats, unsurprisingly, crit substats that aren't pushing you over 100% crit chance provide the largest benefits. After that, speed is the next most impactful, especially if it pushes you over the 134 speed mark. Attack percent is okay as well, and flat attack provides pretty minute gains. Funnily enough, effect hit rate isn't completely useless, since her technique does have a 100% base chance to freeze when entering battle. But I personally don't recommend going for additional effect hit rate. As for four piece relic options, my personal favorite is the four piece hunter of glacial forest. Since you should be using her ultimate during her spectral state, this means that most of her moon slashes will have this buff active, including the ultimate itself. However, there is definitely some downtime on this for some of her moon slashes. Another decent option is the four piece genius of brilliant stars. It's of course best against enemies that have quantum weakness, but still a pretty solid option. And finally, the two-piece Hunter of Glacial Forest plus two-piece Musketeers is another reasonable option. And you can mix and match the Messenger as well if you need some speed. Now as for her two-piece Relic options, the clear winner here is the Rudolent Arena. The extra crit rate and skill damage is extremely useful on her. There are some other options which you can use in the interim, such as the two-piece Celestial Differentiator, Space Ceiling Station, and Inert Salsado. But ultimately, you'll want to use the Rudolent Arena. And up next are her light cones. 
It's insane to imagine that Jing Liu's signature light cone is her best option. <laughs> Basically, it ends up providing her 20% crit damage, 42% bonus damage, and 12% defense shred during her spectral state. It's effectively an unconditional buff to her, as long as all three of her teammates have enough health for her to steal. And for free to plays, it's the usual on the fall of Aeon. While her breaking prowess isn't the best, and since she tends to go quite frequently, thus draining herself of her buffs more quickly, this is overall the second best option for her. A secret vow is a decent choice, but since Jing Liu doesn't drain her own HP like Blade does, and since she hits pretty hard, the enemy is much more likely to have less HP than she does, thus making this thing's passive too unreliable. After those options, well, I did the math for a bunch of them, so feel free to take a look. But none of them really stood out to me. In the next topic are Jing Liu's teammates. Overall, the best damage amplifying support for her is Branya, as usual. Providing free turns means more moon slashes. Also, Branya provides a ton of bonus damage as well as crit damage, which is something that Jing Liu doesn't have as much in comparison to attack percent and crit rate. Another great support option is Silver Wolf. In certain fights, you'll definitely want to add Ice Weakness to the enemy, and Silver Wolf is obviously the best and only option for that. Eidolon 4 Pella is also a noteworthy teammate, since her Eidolon 4 allows her to apply some Cryo Resistance Shred. And since Jing Liu is quite skill point friendly, this will indeed free up some skill points for Pella to apply her Cryo Shred with her skill. Then the usual Harmony supports like Ting Yuan and Asta are great options as well. However, it's worth noting that Jing Liu doesn't benefit as much from attack buffs due to the massive amount of free attack she gains from her talent. But attack buffs are still decent on her. Finally, it's worth mentioning that Yu Kong isn't the best teammate for Jing Liu since Jing Liu has a ton of free attack and also a ton of free crit rate. And two of the three stats that Yu Kong happens to buff are attack and crit rate. And as with most teams, you'll want some type of sustain. Luo Cha stands out as he's able to effortlessly heal your entire party. But honestly, any healer will do fine. Fu Xuan is also an option, but Jing Liu's HP drain might be a bit much over a long fight. Last but not least, Jing Liu can be paired with another DPS character since she's quite skill point friendly. Blade is a great option since her HP drain also adds a stack to Blade's talent. Up next are her Eidolons. Her Eidolon 1 adds 24 crit damage to her Moon Slash and Ultimate. It also significantly improves her damage versus a single target by adding 100% of her attack on top of her usual multipliers if her Ultimate and Moon Slash are only hitting one single enemy. This leads to around a 40-50% to gain to her single target damage. However, the gains against 2-3 to three targets is much smaller, only being a 6% increase to her damage. Anyway, all her Eidolons do stuff, and by Eidolons Eidolon 6, with her Eidolon 2 active, she's doing around 2.83 times the amount of damage versus a single target compared to Eidolon 0. Against 2-3 targets, the damage gain is still extremely substantial, and Jing Liu will be a great character to wail on if that was part of your plan. Now, what do I think about Jing Liu? Well, she'll be the premium ice DPS character for quite some time, and she does a lot of damage considering how skill point friendly she is. Again, she uses around two skill points for every three moon slashes, therefore generally consuming two skill points every five turns. Anyway, I think no one is surprised to see her be the premium ice DPS character since she is the first 5 star featured ice DPS character. Personally, she feels like a top tier DPS character just like the previous 5 star DPS characters that have come before her for their respective elements. Let me know what you think about Jing Liu in the comments below and if I missed anything. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.